Sunday fun day! Welcome to From Center Ice. My name is Courtney, and how was your guys' Sunday? It was great, wasn't it? Yeah, that's probably not the word I would use either. Maybe Tampa Bay fans would use that word, but uh, not me. And if you are here and a Toronto Maple Leafs fan as well, probably not you either. So I am going to be real honest with you guys and tell you that I watched about eight minutes of the game yesterday. And in those eight minutes, we saw a goal from Steven Stamkos a minute into the game from the point. He just ripped it toward the net and there was a bunch of traffic in front. Victor Hedman did a nice little flyby there. Don't think Jack Campbell saw the puck at all and in the puck goes to make it one to nothing in favor of Tampa. And then five minutes and 20 seconds into the period, Belmar made it two to nothing in favor of the Tampa Bay Lightning. The game was going so well. And then seven minutes and 58 seconds into the first period, Patrick Maroon has the puck. Jack Campbell lays down on his stomach. He makes the initial stop with his toe, but Maroon gets the puck back and Jack Campbell is still on his belly. The defense isn't helping him out. Patrick Maroon makes it three to nothing and that is when I turned off the game. Now, I was having a rather nice Sunday up until that game started. You know, Mother's Day is kind of a difficult day, so I took the day off. I was just reading a book. It was so very nice, but I decided to take a break from my book because, oh, the Toronto Maple Leafs game is on. Let's watch the Leafs play. And then one goal and then two goals, and then three goals against the Toronto Maple Leafs before the halfway mark of the first period. And I decided I wasn't going to let the Maple Leafs ruin my peace on that Sunday. So I turned the game off and I went back to my book and that was a much better choice that I made there. The book was very good. I finished it. I started a new book. Great times. I watched the highlights of the Leafs game today, if you could call them highlights. And I saw that in the second period, Ross Colton got a goal to make it 4 nothing in favor of Tampa. Brandon Hagel with an assist on that goal, just for funsies. And then Corey Perry wide open, a nice pass from Kucherov. That makes it 5 to nothing in favor of the Tampa Bay Lightning. And that's how it went into the third period. The third period starts and here come the Toronto Maple Leafs going to make a comeback. William Nylander on the power play gets the Leafs on the board five to one. And then William Nylander again, confusing everybody. The puck did go in, just squeaked right past Andre Vasilevsky there, five to two. Cue the comeback, here come the Leafs. Until Sheldon Keefe pulls Eric Schalgren pretty early in that third period. Yes, Shalgren was in that. Jack Campbell got pulled. Great times in Leafs land. Andre Plot hits the empty net, six to two. But then Jake Musson scored from the blue line. There was traffic in front of Vasilevsky. He just blasts the puck. It goes into the net, six to three. Again, cue the comeback until Ross Colton gets his second goal of the game. Brandon Hagel gets his second assist of the game on the empty netter, seven to three in favor of Tampa. And that is how this game ended. So Jack Campbell made 11 stops on 16 shots. Eric Schalgren made 10 saves on 10 shots. Campbell didn't look the best in this game, but I'm going to go ahead and say that this one probably wasn't on the goaltenders or the goaltender. Eric Schalgren didn't allow a goal. On the power play, the Leafs were one for three. The Lightning were one for eight. The Leafs need to stay out of the box. Simple as that stay out of the box. And I think it's time to put Timothy Liljegren back in the lineup. Justin Hall replaced him in game number three, and he was also in game number four. I don't know why Timothy Liljegren looked pretty good in the first two games that he played, but I am not the lineup decision maker for the Toronto Maple Leafs. But if I were, Timothy Liljegren would be back in the next game. Now the series shifts back to Toronto for game number five. The Leafs hold on to that home ice advantage. They will play game number five at home, and should this go to game seven, that will also be in Toronto, game six being in Tampa Bay. And now I ask you, when is it time to start worrying? Now the series is tied, two to two. I'm sure Lightning fans aren't very worried right now, but then you flip over to Leafs Nation, and are you worried? Am I silly for being a little concerned over here about the Leafs? It's possible. They won game number one, they lost game number two, but they were able to come back and win game number three. 
They lost game number four. Do they, you know, continue the trend and come back and win game number five at home? That would be amazing. But then do they keep continuing that trend and then lose game six? Because should it work out that way, that means that this series goes to a game seven. And I don't think anybody on the Toronto side would be surprised if this series goes seven games because that's just what happens to the Toronto Maple Leafs. The good news is that game seven would be at home, but it also so was last year. Bit of a different situation there. There are fans back in the building now. Of course, there were some fans and frontline workers there last season, but now the arena is full. But when is it time to start worrying about the Maple Leafs? I'm not saying that time is now. I am just asking when. Certainly, if they were to come into tomorrow night and lose game number five, that would be a bit concerning seeing as how the series would then be three to two in favor of the Tampa Bay Lightning. The Leafs would have have to win the last two games and Tampa would be able to win the series with only one more win. Is that when you would be concerned? We all know that the Leafs are capable of winning two games and that is all that they have to do to close out this series. But now the pressure is on and I'm sure that internally the Leafs players and staff were feeling a lot of pressure themselves coming into this series. They have something to prove that they can win a playoff series. And we saw the team respond really well, especially the top guys. Austin Matthews was getting on the board, Mitch Marner was getting on the board, William Nylander got two goals last night. So you can say that they responded well to internal pressure. And maybe a bit of external pressure as well. We all know that the media is talked about a lot in Toronto and it being pretty hard on the players. But now it's getting to that point in a series where winning the next game is very, very important. Game five is not a must win per se, but getting that win in game five would put the Leafs in a very good spot. Now they did have a three to one advantage over the Montreal Canadiens and we've seen them have series leads before and you know, they haven't finished them out. So maybe the best thing for the Leafs would be to not win tomorrow and have their backs against the wall and have to win the last two games. Now, I don't personally believe that. I think that's ridiculous and it would be very stressful for us going into those last two games or last game if they were to lose both of the next two. But I don't know. I've seen a lot of opinions online saying that this Leafs team just feels different. Does it feel different to you? Do you think they can come out and win game five? and game six or seven to close out this series. I think it would probably be silly to say that they can't, but whether they will or not, that is still left to be seen. And that's definitely not a guarantee either way. So while we look forward to game number five tomorrow, how are you feeling? Personally, a little nervous, a little anxious for game number five. The Leafs have got to stay out of the box. That is first and foremost here. If they can do that, they are going to put themselves in a better position. They need to help out their goaltender. I'm sure Jack Campbell will be back in net for game number five. They have got to keep Keep shots to the outside. They have to clear traffic away from him so he can see the puck. They have to clean up rebounds so there are no second chances. They need to shut down the pass through the center of the ice so you don't have goals like Corey Perry's just going in on a wide open net. Where is that perfect game that we saw in game number one? Maybe it's different because Tampa's playing better now than they did in game number one. But certainly the Leafs aren't making it easy on themselves. So stay out of the box help out your goaltender, and put Timothy Liljegren back in the lineup. Sure, they won game number three, but then they lost game number four. Obviously, Justin Hall isn't some magical answer, but that's where I'm sitting. I'm trying not to just overreact after one bad game on a Sunday, but the series is tied two to two. Tampa's going to be a tough out, so hopefully Toronto can play a bit better in the games going forward and be a tough team to beat themselves and hopefully not get beat. But we shall see what happens. Let me know how you're feeling down in the comments. But that is all from me. If you would like to hear more from me or from Center Ice, head on over to fromcenterice.com where there's links to all of the places you can find us. I posted two podcast episodes recently, one on Friday being the From Center Ice happy hour, one today being the nice cozy cast for a Monday, catching up with what happened over the weekend. I went to another ice Hogs game voice is pretty rough still, but it's on the rebound. So check out those two podcast episodes and subscribe to this channel if you aren't yet. Give this video a like. Tell me if you are worried about the Leafs and I will catch you all 
in the next episode. Bye, guys.